Now I want to go through something further about inverse functions, which is finding the inverse of exponential and logarithm functions. And why this is a more of a complicated skill is because we need to additionally use this rule here. So remember back to our logarithms, where if we have a to the power of x equals to y, that changes to, so we can find out the x by making it x equals to log base a y. So remember, the base of the index becomes a base of the log, and the index is what we're finding, so that's why it becomes x equals to log base a y. So how we use this in functions is this would become a to the power of y, right? Because the x becomes a y, and that would equal to x. And remember how we always want to make y the subject. That's why we need to use this log rule to make it equal to y equals 2. Now, remember how we have log base a? Because that's a base of the index, so that becomes a base of the log x like that. So you can see that's how we made y the subject. So remember, for your inverse of exponential and logarithms, we're going to have to use a log rule. Okay, so this is the basis of it. Let's go through some actual questions now where we can practice using this rule. So in question 11, we want to find the inverse of y equals to e to the power of x. So we want to find the inverse so we switch the x and the y. So you can see the y has become an x, and this x has become a y there. Yeah, so we have x equals to e to the power of y. Let's move e to the power of y to the left-hand side here. And now this y, we want to make the subject. So how do we do that? Well, we use the logarithm rule we were talking about before. So y equals to log base e, because that's a base of the index, x. And because we found out what y as a subject equals to, we use the inverse notation here of y negative 1. Okay? So can you see how here we've used that log rule to make y the subject? All right, let's practice that further. So in question 12, let's find the inverse of y equals to e to the power of 4x minus 2. So Switching x and y, this becomes x, this has become y. I want to now make that y the subject again, so I need to use the log rule. So I have log base e x, and your index comes down here, yeah? Because we're always trying to find out what the index equals to. So now we have this, we just need to move the 2 over, so it becomes plus 2 and then divide everything by 4. So you have this divided by 4, and this divided by 4, and that's why it equals 2 a quarter log EX, and 2 on 4 gives you half. Yeah, I've just cancelled that down. So an important thing I want you to note from here is it doesn't matter how complicated the index becomes, as you can see here, we can always use this log rule to bring down the entire index and then we solve from there onwards, okay? All right, so question 13 here. Let's find the inverse of y equals to base 4 to the power of x plus 2. So here you can see we're not using the base e, we're using a different base. So changing this x to y, we have 4 to the power of y plus 2, and that equals to x. So you can see here, not only have I reversed x and y, because I've also done the next step, which is making the y on the left-hand side. So I think it gets to a point where we don't need to do that in two steps. We can save time by knowing to switch x and y, and also putting this on the left-hand side. Yeah? Okay. We can just move that 2 over. Can you see that? and we're left with base 4y, and doesn't matter what the base is, whether it's e or 4 or 100, we can still use that logarithm rule, where we have log base 4 and x minus 2 in brackets, so it's really important to put this in brackets, and that's what equals to y. 
okay? All right, excellent. Let's have a look here. So here in question 14, we want to find the inverse of y equals to log base 5x. So instead of having the index of something, we're given the logarithm function. And now we want to find the inverse of a logarithm function, okay? So we're kind of working differently to what we were before. So switching that y to the x and that x for the y, and we've intuitively already done the next step, which is writing the y on the left-hand side, right? Now, how we make y the subject here is we change this back into index form. So the base of the log becomes the base of the index, which happens to be what's on this side. So you have five to the power of x equals to the inverse of y, okay, yeah? So we're just working backwards, whereas that becomes a base of the index. Great. Let's have a look here. So question 15. We want to find the inverse of y equals to 3 ln 2x minus 1 plus 5. Okay, so this is um, probably going to be a little bit more complicated, which we can tell straight away from looking at it. But let's go through the basic of what I said before, which is always work from the outside in. All right, first things first, we want to switch x and y. So this x has become y, and this y has become x, all right? Working from the outside in, first thing we can get rid of is, excellent, we can move five to the other side, can't we? The next thing we can do is divide both sides by three. So now we're left with ln 2y minus one. What are we gonna do here? Now, I want you to remember that ln is actually log base e, isn't it? I know a lot of times when we get used to writing ln, we actually forget that it stands for log base e. But I think if we write this as log base e, it becomes a lot clearer what we need to do. So we wanna remove it from log and make it back in index form, which is what we did in the previous question, remember? Yeah, but this time we just have the base of e. So the base of the log becomes the base of the index, which is this whole thing over here, yeah? So this whole thing over here is gonna become our index. So you have e to the power of x minus five on three, and that equals to what's in the brackets here, which is two y minus one. Can you see how we've made this the base and this becomes the index, yeah? And that's how we're left with that. And now we just need to simply do what? Good, move one to the other side and then divide everything by two. So we're left with half of that plus half. And because now we finally have y as a subject, we write it with the final notation. So what I want you to remember is that ln actually stands for log base e, and we just need to reverse that back into index form. And also, no matter how complicated, just work from outside in, and then we can just use the logarithm rule.